How is that? Ah, yes, okay. good. Okay, now? Good. The floor is yours now. Okay. Uh, good morning to everyone. Of course, it's good evening here. It's uh, about uh, 8 o'clock plus, and uh, you are about 12 or 13 hours ahead of us. And Malaysia has always been ahead of the USA, you know. And uh, <laughs> so, but we, we are glad to have this opportunity to share with you. And now, as we mentioned a while ago, I, I have been uh, among you about two, year, two or three years ago. But uh, if I can find Dorothy, uh, we let her talk for a few minutes. It's been more than 20 years since she has been there. And uh, so uh, let me uh, see if I can get her here. Dorothy, are you nearby? Okay. Well, what we'll do, we'll go ahead with the uh, exhortation. And then when she comes around, we'll, I'll let her say some words for you also. Okay. All right. So uh, the other week, whenever Pastor Malcolm asked me to think about preaching for you on the 14th, uh, immediately, uh, these words from Matthew chapter 14, verse 13 to 21 came to my mind. Now, someone has already mentioned in your program tonight that uh, this is uh, Valentine's Day. Uh, and, of course, uh, our thoughts turn to love. But I think as us Christians, we can think about the love of God upon us. Uh, and so that's what uh, that's more than just the Valentine uh, celebration, which a lot of people uh, talk about. So uh, as we think about Valentine's Day, we can think about God's love. Uh, so uh, at the time uh, Pastor Malcolm asked me, uh, I, I guess I wasn't aware that this time would be Valentine's Day and that I could talk about love. But uh, actually uh, looking at the scripture which uh, we have before us, uh, Matthew chapter 14, verse uh, uh, 13, uh, chapter 14, verse 13 through 21, uh, we can look and see the love of God displayed here. So uh, give attention to these words. It says, when Jesus heard this, and uh, the, this here is talking about uh, in chapter 13, four, uh, the uh, verses before our scripture here uh he was talking about he had learned about that john the baptist had been uh, uh killed and so uh he was seeking to find a way to weep and mourn so look at this here's the scripture here uh when jesus heard what had happened he uh went by boat to a solitary place and hearing of uh, this the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on uh, them. And uh, he, uh, let's see, I, I don't see it on the screen right now. Uh, Jesus went ashore and saw a great assembly. And he was moved with compassion toward them. And the scripture says there that he healed the sick. Okay, verse 15, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them here to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and two fish, looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. May the Lord bless the uh, reading of his word. Now, just a few words of introduction. Uh, number one, this is the only miracle of Jesus recorded by all four Gospels. And the more often something is recorded in the scripture, the more important it was. So Jesus 
Uh, this was a very important, very important time for Jesus to do this. And then uh, Jesus actually fed more than 5,000. It may have been over 10,000 because uh, it says 10, uh, 5,000 men. And if most of those had a wife and most of those husband's wife had children, you can see maybe even 10,000 plus. So this was really a great miracle. And then uh, a, we see here also a major miracle purpose. It shows us something of God's ability to supply spiritual, the spiritual needs of the world. Now on the screen here, you'll see to the left my outline, the situation, the problem, the solution, and the result. Okay, as far as the situation is concerned, in this chapter, we see both the teaching and healing aspects of Jesus' ministry. Now, if you look in chapter 13, 12, along in there, uh, here are several parables that Jesus gave. And in parables, he was teaching the disciples. And then here in the middle of this chapter with these verses, which I read to you, it mentions that he healed the people. And so, yeah, uh, verse 14, he healed their sick. And so this chapter, this part of the chapter, shows us both the teaching and the healing aspects of the ministry of Jesus. And then uh, think about this. His compassion kept him from getting away to mourn at the brutal passing of John the Baptist. And this showed the humanity of Jesus as he wanted to, he needed to get away and to mourn in the loss of his friend and uh, preparer of his way, John the Baptist. And so uh, we see the, the uh, compassion of Jesus here. And you'll see also as uh, whenever he came ashore, after being in the, uh, coming to the place, and got out uh, on the shore, the people had followed him around the lake and they came and they just crowded around him. And this reminds us that Jesus could never get away from the crowds. And so something of our situation day, today, we need never get away from the crowds because all around us, there are people who need to hear the gospel of Christ. All around us of people are people who are uh, physically and spiritually hungry. And so uh, we can see Jesus, the one who can supply their needs. Now look at the uh, problem that we that we encounter here in this section. Uh, number one is beginning to get late in the day. It was beginning to get late, and we don't know whether they just where those folks are going to stay all night around, whether it was uh, summertime and they could camp out. We don't don't know just about what they were going to do at night. And then also uh, the disciples reminded Jesus and us that the people were soon to begin to get hungry. He said they've been here with you all day. And they're, they're, the people are, are, are hungry. And, and then so we see anxiety on the part of the disciples. Now, when we look at the problems facing us as Christians in our ministry through our church today, there are countless problems. And sometimes we get a bit anxious about not being able to meet, not being able to answer these problems. But we need to remember that as the source for the disciples was Jesus, also we can go to Jesus for the solving of our problems as well. And then uh, look at the uh, solution here. Uh, and this is uh, quite uh, interesting as we see this from our scripture, that uh, we see the difference between the human and divine solutions to problems. Now looking at the solution of the disciples, the disciples solution was no solution. In other words, what was needed, the disciples did not have. And so uh, this is the human uh, aspect. If we think about our abilities to supply the needs and give solutions to people's problems, Quite often, we just don't have it. And uh, then we see, though, the Jesus perspective. And here he uh, did not get anxious. 
He didn't get upset or wondering what he was going to do. He immediately told the disciples, he said, you give them to eat. You give them to eat. In other words, in Jesus, the disciples themselves had the solution to the situation. Jesus is saying that if the disciples would look to him, he would supply their needs and they in turn would help Jesus supplying the needs of the people at that, on that occasion. The same is still true today. The problems that we face in our world, whether it be to try to share the gospel with others or just all sorts of problems, we ourselves don't have the solution, but we do have the source of all solutions to all problems. And as the disciples went to Jesus, we also can go to Jesus. And so uh, the, you have the disciples solution, which was really no solution. You have Jesus perspective. He said, now here you, my followers, have what it takes to feed these people in me. And so he gave them this command. And uh, notice or remember that God often used what Jesus had to perform his wonders. And here these uh, disciples said, well, Lord, we have only uh, five loaves and two fish. This is not nearly enough to feed this uh, great multitude of people. But we can see here the truth of the statement that when we give our little to him, then he can make much from them. And so uh, this is, uh, uh, Jesus is uh, getting the disciples ready for another lesson. And remember too, that most everything Jesus did was an opportunity for teaching. All the miracles he performed, most of the things he did it recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they provided him opportunity to teach the disciples, to give them lessons which they needed to learn. And uh, so uh, then uh, you see uh, uh, here, I was going first to the, uh, go back to the point where I said that God often used what people had to perform his wonders. So we have that here. They brought what little bit they had, gave it to Jesus, and he was able to perform a tremendous miracle from. Okay, now look uh, lastly here at the result. Now, uh, uh, you see, as, as I said already, Jesus' miracle here, he was readying the disciples for an important lesson and reminding us that most everything he did Every miracle he performed, all that he did, it was he it provided an opportunity for him to teach the disciples. And uh, of course, that's the idea: the teacher and the disciples. The 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 the, the, the teacher gives out lessons for the disciples. The, the the disciples understand the lesson of the master and go out and obey his commands. So uh, here we see that uh, we see Jesus deeper meaning in this miracle. Here is that as, that as he could supply the abundant physical needs, even so he could supply spiritual needs. And so uh, he, Jesus wanted the disciples to know that as he supplied their physical needs, that they were to help him, and he in turn could supply their spiritual needs. Now, uh, look quickly as I bring this to a close. Look at four lessons for our learning. And uh, number one, may God help us to allow godly compassion for others outweigh our sometimes personal spiritual needs. Now, understand this again. May God help us 
you and me, Christians in this 21st century, there in, for you Christians in Kuching, as well as us here in America, may God help us to allow godly compassion for others outweigh our sometimes personal spiritual needs. And then uh, next, may God help us to see both the physical and spiritual needs of the crowds around us and do what we can to supply them. To see both the physical and the spiritual needs. Now, during this time of COVID, the coronavirus, it has really upset the situations of a lot of people. And many people have great needs. And so it is a, actually, God has given his church uh, an opportunity to see again the needs of people and in a greater way. And so uh, as we see those physical and spiritual needs around us, and we are to do what we can to supply them. And then a uh, third lesson for our learning is this. May God help us understand that Jesus always has been, is presently, and will always be the solution to both physical and spiritual and the spiritual needs of man. He always has been. We learned that even way back over 2,000 years ago here in this experience with the disciples that Jesus saw physical need, he supplied it, and beyond that, below that, deeper than that, they, he was responding to their spiritual needs. And so may God help us to understand that Jesus always has been, presently is. Now, he is supplying your needs there in Kuching. The needs of people, whether they be hungry, physically, spiritually, uh, as well as here in America. God is now presently in the process of responding to needs of people through his people. And so uh, he always has been. He is presently. And the fact that he has been faithful in the past assures us that he will be faithful in the future to us. And then a, a last uh, lesson for our learning is, may God help us to see that when we bring others to Christ, men are blessed indeed, and God is glorified. When we bring others to Christ, men are blessed indeed, and God is glorified. So we notice here in this passage that these 5,000 men plus 5,000 plus women and children, uh, they, uh, they, they were shown, they were given what they needed and says they were satisfied. They ate and they were satisfied. And of course, you, you and I know that in this great miracle here that God was glorified in it and so when we bring others to Christ that's just like bringing them into where he can feed them as he did the 5,000 that in doing that the people are satisfied the disciples themselves were blessed and God was glorified so this is uh, uh, even in this passage here, we can see something of the of love, of which is something of the subject during uh, Valentine's Day tomorrow. Or your, it's already there in your in your country, and uh, you are twelve to fourteen hours still ahead of us, and so it's not yet Valentine's Day here. But anyway, through and through this passage of scripture here, we see the uh, work of God and uh, his concern for the spiritual and phys physical and spiritual needs of everybody. And that he is, uses, today he uses his children, you and me, to also see the needs 
and to help supply those needs, whether they be physical or be spiritual. So, uh, or spiritual needs. So may God bless and use what we shared with you just now about the feeding of the, not just the 5,000, but maybe the 10,000 plus people. And now I'm going to uh, pause for a few minutes and uh, let Dorothy say a word to you. Uh, many of you have never met her. And, uh, but she, we were together there in beginning the work in uh, uh, Kuching. And <clears throat> of course, she and I always have been a team and God has blessed us. And I think the fact that we, we can see God's blessing in the fact that FBC has become what it is today. So I'll pause for a few minutes and I'll let Dorothy talk. And then uh, after that, we'll uh, uh, seek to answer these questions. Brother Malcolm, if, if this is okay to do it this way, uh, we, we will proceed this way, okay? Good. All right, so here is uh, Dorothy and uh, actually she and I, uh, this year have been married to 62, 63, <laughs> coming up June 1. We will have been married 63 years. Oh. And it's just, it's just like yesterday, guys. So remember this, okay. <laughs> That's because he's a good Valentine. <clears throat> I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking um, it's a privilege to uh, be with you all tonight, and um, uh, it made me go back and remember when we first arrived in Kuching, and something uh, very special the Lord talked to me about on that day. We had uh, ridden the steamship Kimanis from Kota Kinabalu, Jesselton at that time, down to Kuching, and uh, we arrived early in the morning one day in June, 1970, and the ship had to drop anchor out in the open waters. And then later we went into Kuching on a small boat. So we were sitting out there waiting for customs and immigration people to come and clear us. <clears throat> and that morning in the devotional reading that I had, um, it was from the book of Acts chapter nine, where Paul had his Damascus road experience. And at that time, we were getting ready to go into Kuching. There was no Baptist church in the whole state of Sarawak. We were fairly young missionaries and coming to start the first Baptist church. We'd not done that before. And my mind was spinning around with what are we going to do? How are we going to do it? Is it going to work? You know, all those kinds of things. And as I read that morning in uh, Paul's experience, after he was struck blind and uh, the Lord uh, was talking to him and he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord told him one thing. He said, go into the city and it will be told you what to do. And I remember that morning thinking, wow, I don't need to be worrying. Uh, God's brought us this far. We just got to get on that little boat and go into the city of Kuching and just take one step at a time and do what the Lord puts before us to do. And I wanted to share that with you because Really, that's the way we all need to be thinking one day at a time. What do you want me to do today, Lord? And he has promised you just take that next step and he'll tell us what to do. Okay, uh, Brother Malcolm, Pastor Malcolm, you can uh, take over and tell us what to do for 